And besides, we need to talk about this uh, this NXT show right here because very quickly, Mike, without going on for an hour, just a quick, what did you think of this show? Am I the only one that was underwhelmed? Probably. Probably. Really? I, I, you know, yeah, 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 I think so. I, you were I liked, overwhelmed? I was definitely not overwhelmed. Were you, you know, just I thought, whelmed? I, I was whelmed. I thought it was a nice, solid show. I like some of the aesthetic changes that they made to the show as far as the graphics go. I think the the eagle skeleton logo combinations a little bit much. But I, I, again, some of those aesthetics matter. And of course, you know, the storylines and the stars need to matter more. But I liked Leon Ruff and Swerve Scott. I like the way that they've kind of linked them with each other to kind of try to move things forward with them. I'm not the biggest Karrion Cross fan in the world, but I'm in the minority on that one, and there seems to be a lot of people that like him. I don't think that the promo was that great, but I thought starting the show with it, I thought they established that really well. MSK, I thought that was a nice showcase for them. I, I guess you either like them or you don't. It was kind of a weird matchup in that Drake Maverick you know, being as part of the other team seemed to get a lot of sympathy there, which, you know, had people booing MSK, but they set up Mercedes Martinez and, and, uh, uh brain lock on her name, Billy Stark, and they moved some things forward. The main event, you know, you can talk about that. I know you're going to get into that. It is what it is. I did pop huge and I'm ashamed of myself because I hate this storyline, but Indy Hartwell giving the thumbs up. I got to admit, I did pop for oh, that, God. but that's right. a big problem. That's the biggest problem I have is that Gargano is a goofball. I don't buy. I like Bronson Reed and Austin Theory a lot. And for them to be continuously tied up into this, I didn't like that. But Escobar is a star. I like how they set up Kushida and Kushida getting that victory I thought was awesome and setting up a match with Dunn for later. Again, I thought a lot of things really worked on the show. Was it the greatest show in the world? No. Was it a nice base to move forward? I, I believe that it was. Other than I would have definitely changed the main event, but that's just me. Okay, Did so... Did I go on forever? Yeah, so listen. Here's here's <laughs> my whole point of this show, everybody. Like, I didn't hate this show, okay? I thought the show was fine. But my <laughs> point is, this is the first Tuesday NXT show. They've moved to Tuesday. They're going to be on Tuesday for the rest of their lives until maybe next year or whatever. But the point is... They're Tuesdays now, okay? So if you remember to watch Tuesday, now it's like, oh, well, do I want to watch every Tuesday now that we don't have a Wednesday Night Wars anymore? Oh, it's the first takeover after the WrestleMania takeover show. This is what we got, everybody. Killian, uh, Karrion crossed as a promo, which was fine, okay? All right. We have Killian Dane and Drake Maverick versus MSK for the tag team titles. Which was, it was fine, but you have two babyface teams. The crowd, like, I'm, it's, they were dead, okay? I don't want to hear that they were not dead, because they were dead. And they were dead for, like, most of the show here. They were just sitting there, watching the show, and they were dead. And so, the match was okay, but I'm watching this okay match in front of a crowd that's dead. We have uh, Alexander Wolf showing up to recruit uh, Killian Dane, but then they beat him up. So, uh, and by the way, what happened to Imperium and Timothy Thatcher? It's like, is that going to continue? Because it appeared to have been completely dropped here on this show. We have a Mercedes Martinez deal that sets up a match later. We had Cole O'Reilly Aftermath, which was funny. They're being carted into the hospital or the medical center or the hospital-like structure. And they're screaming <laughs> at each other on these gurneys. Is there that? Right? That was great. Mercedes Martinez beats Jesse Kamea. It was like two minutes Zero heat from the crowd, and then she chokes Robert Stone. Okay, whatever. Uh, we have a couple promos and everything like that. And then, yes, we had Kushida Santos Escobar. That was a good match. Kushida won the title. I don't want to complain. I know this will come off as a complaint, but I liked it, and I loved the Kushida won. But I would have preferred if, like, a month ago, Kushida won the North American title which is supposed to be a more prestigious title, as opposed to this title, where he's largely, I guess, going to be doing stuff on 205 Live, which apparently still exists, but, like, no one watches it. But I like that he won, so that was nice. We had a Chomp and Timothy Thatcher promo. They're back together again and seem to be happy. We had Dakota in the ring calling out Raquel. Now, people are going to get mad. Let me just preface this by saying that I did love this segment, okay? Raquel comes out, 
And then she has a, a brief stare down with Frankie Monet, who I guess are going to feud. And then Rhea Ripley's music hits, Bianca Belair music hits. They all come out and they have this big group hug and everybody goes crazy. Now, I liked it. It was a cool moment. It actually brought these dead fans to life. So, like, I'm, I'm cool with all of that. But my only question is this, everybody. Were Rhea Ripley and Raquel not in the middle of a violent blood feud the last time that we saw them? Weren't they killing each other the last time we saw them? Now they're back and they're just all hugging and buddies. It doesn't matter because they're on separate brands. But I couldn't help but note, like, you know, if if Kyle O'Reilly went to the main roster and Adam Cole went to Raw and, like, all of a sudden in a pay-per-view they reunited and hugged, would that not be weird? Am I the only one? Anyway. It, it would only be weird if Triple H wasn't standing behind them. But I liked I liked the moment. It was just kind of weird. Am I wrong to say that? Leon Ruff and Swerve Scott was a good match, and I would go as far as to say that this was the best that Leon Ruff has ever looked in NXT. I yes. mean, he had matches with Gargano, and Gargano's great, but comedy, and you're a dork, and blah, blah, blah. This, he was in there. They treated him as a serious guy. He did this fantastic top rope Frankenstein that was awesome. I mean, this was by far the best thing on the show. And then uh, Zoe Stark, Mike, uh, did a sorry. promo. Yeah. And uh, Stark's on the indie, sorry. And then, by the way, so Swerve wins the match with Leon Ruff, just beats the guy with his move in the middle of the ring. And then this poor sport, Leon Ruff, attacks his poor guy, and they're going to keep feuding. So, okay, well, that's fine. At least they had a good match that I want to see again. And then finally, yes, would this ever have gone head-to-head -head with AEW, the main event that they gave us? It's The Way versus Shotzi, Ember, Loomis, and Reed. They do a bunch of comedy. Uh, like, uh, what's her name? Uh, Indy Hartwell Indy. loves the creep from the creep farm. She wants him to love her. It's just like, that's the whole match. This is the main event of the show. And they're doing comedy, and finally he carries her to the back, and she gives a big thumbs up, and <laughs> I'm like, bro, this is the main event of your first Tuesday show. You're trying to get some people that normally watch AEW to go, you know what, I like this NXT show. I'm going to watch it every... What is this? Uh, this creepy guy is... Oh. I'm like, bro. So anyway, uh, Reed, who got beaten on the last show, he gets his big win here. He gets his win back. The show was fine, but, like, the point of this show is all of these AEW fans might go, hey, I want to watch this show this week. That's what you gave them, a show that was there with a comedy main event. Maybe it's going to work out great. Maybe all of those 18 to 34s are going to watch the third show and go, man, look what I've been missing. I did not think that this was a showcase show for NXT their first when their first Tuesday, but listen, if you did, that's what matters. You, not me. I'm going to watch it anyway. We'll see how this turns out. Do you think it would have been better if there were arcade video games and Legos? Dude, I don't know. What if, what if, what there was Trent's, violence and blood in that if, match. What if Trent's mom picked up, they, they went outside, Dexter was carrying... Indy outside to over the horizon, I guess, and Trent's mom picked them up. Would that have made it better? Would Bro, that have I don't know what would have made it better. I don't know. I just know that I watched... A, and listen, you could say whatever you want about video games surrounding the ring, because as a fan going into that match, I was not excited to see that match. I was like, oh my god, this, this feud is going to continue. But you know what? It was like a really violent match, and people liked it. And it's done well in the rating. So that's what I have to say about that. But this one, you know what? Maybe this show's going to do a million viewers. Lance is doing his online coaching service <laughs> as he reviews and critiques the Battle of the Empire. This match is reminiscent of Flair Steamboat. Unfortunately, it's Vic Steamboat and David yes. Flair. Oh, terrible. And then again, this is what threw me because... That is not a particularly babyface thing to do. I wouldn't say we were both heels, but I, I could argue we were both unlikable. <laughs> <laughs> and to this day. Cardio and lack of interest is a big part. I think Orange Cassidy stole his gimmick from Vinny. Look at the cover of this DVD. It's one of my favorite photos of myself ever taken. And it is absolutely Orange Cassidy. You do vocal. look exactly like Orange Cassidy, just much yes. larger. Yes, and worse. Watch Vinny's head <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> bounce off the mat when he misses this elbow. Face the wrong way. 
Oh, oh God! Putting your own how, move on How disgraceful you. to put the the man behind figure four in a figure four. This was really well done here at the end, though. You hit this so dead perfect in the middle. Not that chop, though. No. No! You need the flailing because there needs to be energy to the spot because it's supposed to be fun. The crowd wants to be excited, so someone has to display energy, and it's not going to be the man in the ring. <laughs> oh, no, don't do that! What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> you fool! I got a little else to say. It's not very good. I miss chopping people. Wasn't the best match of all time. You know what I'm saying? I don't think you got five stars. Could probably take some lessons from Miz on how to work. Oh, get out of here. If you're out there listening and you would like Lance to uh, review one of your matches, much like he did to ours here, how do they do this, Lance? They can email me at swavirtualtraining at gmail.com. As I mentioned, the price is uh, 125 US for a single session. Uh, 300 for three. So again, SWA virtual training at gmail.com. If you enjoy these videos for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full length editions of the Brian and Vinny show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.